Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Sakshi Sethi. I manage the corporate membership program here at Optica, formerly known as OIDA. I'm really excited to introduce today's speaker, one of our uh, corporate members, uh, Menlo Systems. They have a really great presentation lined up for us. Um, but before we get started, I just want to take a moment to review a couple of housekeeping items. I'm sure at this point, everyone is a Zoom webinar professional, but um, in case you need any assistance, there is a chat icon. It's located at the bottom of your screen. You can use that to message me at any time if you have any questions, any technical issues, anything that you need me to help you answer, please use the chat icon. Otherwise, the speakers will be referring to our Q&A icon also located at the bottom of your screen. So if you have any questions for our speakers, please type in your question there directly. You'll select the Q&A icon, a pop-up box will appear, and you'll be able to submit your question there directly. There are a couple of breaks in the presentation to accommodate Q&A, so please submit your question as soon as it comes to you, and we'll be sure to get that answered as soon as possible. And then the final tip is we are recording this webinar. So in case you have a colleague who is unable to attend, you have to drop off a couple minutes early, no problem. We will be posting this video recording in the next one to two business days. I'll send you a link here in just a moment where you can find the recording online, um, but otherwise uh, enjoy the live presentation. So that's all I have. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to our first speaker, Milan from Menlo Systems to get us started. And Milan, you're on mute, I think. Hello, everyone, and welcome, everybody, from my side as well to this webinar called from the beautiful city surrounded by the Alps out of Munich. For those of you who do not know Menlo Systems yet, I'd like to start this talk to give you a little introduction of our company and who we are. Menlo Systems is a pioneer in the invention of the frequency comp technology. We are located, as I said, in the southeastern part of Germany, in Bavaria, a city called Munich, uh, close to the Alps. Our origin dates back already more than 20 years by being a spin-off initially from the Max Planck Institute of Quantum Optics. And two of the uh, earlier PhD students among uh, Michael May and Ronald Holzwald still hold the managing position at Menlo Systems. And it was Theodor Hensch, who is a co-founder of Menlo Systems, whose invention and development of the frequency comm technology has been awarded by the Nobel Prize in 2005. Based on these important fundamentals, Menlo Systems has expanded its uh, portfolio, product portfolio, by several more products. Every, every single product is relying on our um, patented femtosecond fiber laser technology. Apart from the frequency comms, therefore, we offer frequency um, femtosecond fiber lasers uh, new, recently also quantum laser systems based on frequency and uh, frequency comms, ultra stable lasers, comms that fly into space. But today's session is dedicated more on the, into the field of synchronization terahertz systems. So I'd like to introduce everybody here to our today's speaker. Next to me, there will be Enrico Dardanus, who is the product manager of Menlo Systems in the field of terahertz and synchronization solutions. You can see it him on the screen, I guess. Then there will be me. I myself, I am senior sales responsible at Menlo Systems in the field of terahertz, femtosecond lasers, and synchronization solutions. And as a supportive uh, I mean, Dr. Andon Bano is with us. He is sales engineer in the field of femtosecond fiber lasers and will be happy to receive and potentially also answer your question during today's webinar. So let's talk about synchronization. And when I say synchronization, I'm not talking today about rowing. So apologies to everybody out there who was expecting a talk about rowing. Uh, I myself like to dedicate uh, this webinar to high-speed optical sampling and where you actually require synchronization. So what can you actually uh, expect from this presentation? First of all, we would like to introduce you how important synchronization is, how you realize it to uh, synchronize femtosecond fiber lasers. You can think of repetition rate stabilization. And we will also show you state-of-the-art phase electronics like offered from Magno Systems. As one example, we picked out a solution that is uh, making pretty much use of ultra-fast um, sampling. It's called ASOPS. It's the short form of asynchronous optical sampling where you actually lock two laser systems to each other to achieve an ultra-fast sampling 
technology, which you use in different sorts of application. And Enrico will take care of this section of today's webinar and give you a few of insights of how our systems are being actively used in the field. So let's talk about why you actually uh, need to, to synchronize femtosecond lasers. So there are many uh, impacts on such a system that can uh, degrade your measurement. For instance, some effects from acoustic noise tend to uh, have an impact on the laser cavity stability. There can be drift of your laser system, which has a negative effect on your actual measurement setting. And there might be requirements where you actually like to force a repetition rate to a given reference. So among many different applications, we picked out again a few ones that will be explained by Enrico later on. For instance, we will talk about ultra-fast time domain spectroscopy, terahertz spectroscopy, imaging and microscopy applications, but also a quite new and interesting approach is called picosecond ultrasound and a more complex variant of synchronization it's the timing distribution systems. So apart from the left side that you see here and the impacts that stabiliz stabilization of a laser has, you know, you need different sorts of comp components and we will have a more closer look on this. First of all, you need a laser source. That's the fundamental source that you would like to synchronize. And of course, if you like to synchronize one unit to another, there should be a reference system. And the part in the middle, this is what we like to discuss today. It's the locking electronics. So let's talk about locking a laser system to a fixed uh, reference and having a fixed repetition rate stabilization. As a matter of fact, it is very important to have a high frequency reference source. The higher the reference frequency is, the better is the stability of the laser locking in the end. So what could be typical custom applications? Uh, customers come to us and ask us usually to have a very low short-term noise and of course also a low long-term drift. I will explain you in our solution how we address these two demands with a technology that we refer to as by the name two-stage locking mode. The two-stage locking mode, as the name already says, is composed of a fundamental and a harmonic lock. In the first part, we lock the reference fundamentally to our laser system to ensure a certain phase stability. So we define a fixed phase situation. In the second, the harmonic lock, we will multiply the reference to a higher frequency to achieve the highest best short-term performance. And of course, aside of a, such a locking electronic, you need a temperature stabilized oscillator. So let's have a closer look on the dual locking technique. We start by, let's assume we have a customer laser given a repetition rate of 100 megahertz. Uh, this laser, of course, must have a certain unit that allows to change the cavity tuning, uh, the cavity lengths by, by, by a slight means. And next to the laser source, we have a reference. Let's, let's say we have a reference at 10 megahertz. So as I explained earlier, we will do a first fundamental lock. Um, we would multiply the 10 megahertz by 10 by the factor of 10 to have the common uh, repetition rate as our laser. So we are ending up at uh, 100 megahertz. We define a fixed phase position. Now, next to the fundamental stage, I mentioned already, there will be a harmonic lock. So we multiply our 10 megahertz reference uh, frequency by a multiple to come to a range where we are close to the gigahertz range. And with, the two, with, with these two inputs, we have a feed-in uh, input for our phase detector, which also, on the other hand, feeds in an optical monitor signal from our laser source. Both the signals are compared and giving a signal out to our server controller which is the element which later on will control the piezo, act, uh, the piezo actuator of our laser source and enable a fine tuning of the repetition rate. Now, it is necessary to say that the amplifier that you see after the server controller is a unit that is quite customized. And it's not only a laser system for Mendel systems that our synchronization electronics allows to lock, it can be any sort of laser system. And this is the unit which is highly customizable and with, which is what our OEM customers of our synchronization units like for the same reason. What would be a nice hardware without having a controllable and easy to use software? Here's our solution for our RRE Synchro, which stands for Repetition Rate Stabilization Electronics. First of all, this unit uh, is not only meant to control a Menlo laser and the control electronics, you can also operate different laser sources and control only the electronics of the locking 
box. Now, this software can be controlled directly via the graphical user interface that you see here, or you can seamlessly embed it via our remote control interface. And depending on the configuration, this graphical user interface might look different and can also customize uh, different layouts like our ASAP composition where you lock two laser systems instead of only one to a source. Now let's have a look on a few results. These are exemplary results obtained by locking a laser, a femtosecond fiber laser to an RF reference. And it has to be said that it is not the locking electronics that gives the performance of a system. Usually here, it is the RF reference and its stability that will define the overall integrated timing jitter. And the timing jitter that I'm referring to here is the red curve that you see with uh, the numbers on the right side of the figure. And here it should be lower than 100 femtoseconds or in the range of 100 femtoseconds. Now this becomes completely different if you lock two optical sources like two femtosecond laser source, you can use an optical or a balanced cross correlator to achieve this. And you can see immediately from the figure on the right side again, where you have in red color, the integrated timing jitter that the overall integrated timing jitter is much lower than you would if you would lock a laser to an RF reference. And for, for certain applications, this might be a strict requirement, as you know. So dedicated to different application areas, there are external units, which can feed or can be combined with our synchronization electronics, uh, dedicated to different scenarios, like you see here, what we call in short form bomb PD is a balanced optical to microwave phase detector. You use this to lock a laser to an RF reference and have a higher precision, a higher stability of the overall composition. Similarly, you can use a BCC, which is a balanced cross correlator photo detector, and you would use this to lock two laser systems to each other. And in comparison, or as I showed you before in the figure, we can achieve a few femtoseconds of stability, which is a quite nice value. And finally, um, some applications come at higher frequencies, and here we would use an external mixer detector unit to achieve this and accommodate the needs. So. To conclude here on the synchronization box, there are many features that are offered by the ROE Synchro, how we call it. Um, it is a remotely controllable unit. It has customizable amplifiers to serve not only a Mendel laser, but also different lasers as being used as an OEM engine currently. But there are also extra benefits that are not offered by other suppliers. And when I say this, I mean that during the whole process of uh, consultation, technical consultation, we will be with you. We will guide you, guide you through the process and optimize the layout according to your needs. Every phase and repetition rate stability is guaranteed. So with our delivery of a system, there will be a test report and an end test and all these documentations will be sent to you with the shipping of the system. As you remember from the last slide, customizations are possible such as different wavelengths inputs or custom lock schemes. Before we are coming to the next section, I'd like to take a moment to ask you two questions. The first question would be, and you can answer this uh, now live, I guess the polling is already active. The first question would be, and I'll read this out for you. Have you employed Mendel Systems repetition rate stabilization electronics before? And here the answer is yes or no. And the second one would be, which of the units and systems that I've presented already might fit your application or experiment. And here, differently from the first questions, you are allowed to answer multiply. The first answer would be dedicated or related to the standard laser locking electronics, RE Synchro. The second answer would be dedicated to locking a single laser to a reference, like I showed you in the beginning. And the last question, uh, the last uh, input would be dedicated to a dual laser locking principle, like in our ASAP systems. I'll leave this moment for you to answer the question. And once the results are with me, I will read this out for everybody. So a good third of you is using a manual systems device for locking. I'm glad to hear this, very good. And uh, two, uh, two third of the people answering this question have not used a manual system so far. I'm glad as well. That's why we are here. And I'd like to introduce you a little more on typical applications and demands of such a system. As for the second question, turns out that the answers are 
quite nicely separated over all answers, quite evenly distributed. There's a little more um, people dedicated to laser locking electronics, so the classic mean of locking a laser uh, to one single source. Thank you very much for this input. And we will now come to a section where we actually look where you can employ the synchronization electronics um, to use it for an ultra fast optical sampling system. So two examples I will like to show here. The one example shows a master slave configuration. So basically you can lock one laser to another. It is obvious that the laser stability of the laser lace, of the slave laser system is dependent on the laser noise of the master system. So here's a slight disadvantage. In comparison, we can lock two lasers to a shared reference. And it becomes obvious that both laser systems have the same stability as the reference systems. So depending on the application, the one or the other could be preferred. Now, the next section would be to lock the laser system immediately with a fixed repetition rate. For some application, this might be nice enough. For another one, other applications, you might to change your uh, frequency. You might also like to change the phase shift. And here's one example where we do this. I'd like to step one, uh, go one step back and show you a conventional example of terahertz time domain spectroscopy composed of a laser system, uh, let's say a pumping pulse, a probing pulse, and in order to have a time resolved signal, we use a conventional delay line system. You achieve quite nice performances, but if you want to beat the scan speed and want to achieve outstanding uh, optically sampling and high speed scanning speeds, you'd like to reduce this part of the system and replace it by another laser source. And this is what you actually do in a system that we call ASOPS. Again, it stands for asynchronous optical sampling. You have two femtosecond fiber lasers and those are locked to each other. Both share the same uh, uh, reference source. So in contrast to the earlier model where a delay line moves back and forth through optical or optomechanical means, we are now only having an optical sampling technique. You can see laser one, laser two, two pulses. If you, slightly, if you slightly detune the repetition rate, you will have a slight offset of the repetition rate tuning. And so the pulse are coming at different timestamps. Those timestamps accumulate over time. And it happens that you uh, measure and scan the uh, sample the terahertz signal in this case at different timestamps to achieve a time, time resolved signal. One big disadvantage, uh, well, sorry, one big advantage of this technique is you have a really wide scan window. And for certain applications, you would like to control the uh, dynamics of your physics at a large temperature, a large time scale. And this is what happens here because the time window refers to the inverse of the repetition rate. So for a typical system having a 100 megahertz repetition rate, it would mean a 10 nanosecond of scan window, which is unbeaten. So derived from this technique, Menlo Systems has come up with two major systems. One is a more versatile system based, off more, based on more powerful laser systems. You can combine it with different sorts of wavelengths. So it could be a 1560 nanometer source combined with a one micrometer source, depending on applications. Again, this might differ a little uh, and you could choose different wavelengths. Now this is a breadboard based unit. It comes with more powerful laser source, completely temperature stabilized. In reference to the unit that you have seen on the right, on the left side, it's world's most compact uh, ASOPS engine. It employs two laser systems, nicely engineered that it's, it's really a robust technology. You can operate it with 1560 nanometer and it has seat ports available for you to operate also 780 nanometer. So the second harmonic of the system. With that, I'd like to hand over to Enrico who will give you more insights on the OSE, the optical sampling engine and the ASOPS engine and will head over to give you few more examples and applications. Thank you, Milan, for the nice introduction. Uh, so I will uh, start from here. So we talk about the OSE system. That's our uh, compact uh, ASOP system. So two, uh, two, a dual laser system in a rack, uh, working at the telecom wavelength of 1.5 micron. So, uh, here in this slide are summarized uh, the characteristics of the systems. So basically it is a synchronized to a laser system working on the ASOPS principle featuring uh, two uh, 100 megahertz IBM oscillators with uh, 
more than 100 milliwatt of power per each oscillator, but customizations are possible. And a pulse uh, with a duration of less than 90 femtosecond. The REC includes uh, the full repetition rate control engine, like we can see in the uh, scheme, and, mean, and also a feature for the user an integrated measurement trigger, which uh, allows then the user to use uh, the to employ the OSC system in different application scenarios and always being able to uh, perform measurements and sampling with this engine. Uh, the offset detuning is uh, comparable to our scientific system, so this uh, plus minus 10 kilohertz. Uh, the scanning range is the ambient 10 nanosecond as in the scientific system. And what it comes uh, to round up the unit is also the software control, of which I want to give a slight uh, intuition here. So what we can see in this picture, which now will turn to a video, is uh, a OSE system, which is uh, on an optical table, and it is now operating. And you can see that I connected my laptop to the system to get access to the control software of the instrument. And the control software of the instrument is able to uh, control the different lasers separately, and also the integrated repetition rate electronics. On the front panel, there is the access to the optical outputs, and uh, auxiliary outputs are possible. There is communication ports, uh, there is a key switch like every laser system, and on the back, uh, panel of the system, there are uh, other connection possibilities like the Ethernet connection we are using to mirror uh, the software of the instrument on a laptop. And now I want to switch to the second video where I can show you more in detail the software interface. So you can see laser A, repetition rate A, laser B, repetition rate B. I can switch on and off the laser. I can check the temperature of the laser. And if I move to the repetition rate control, I can see if the laser is locked, uh, if the tracking is working properly. And if I move on on the video, I can even go for the laser B where I have also the possibility to set the repetition rate offset, in this case, 100 Hertz. And as we saw before, when I set the repetition rate offset, I am doing optical scanning. So. I am scanning at a speed of 100 Hz in that case, because I am generating a constant different frequency, which is translating in a continuous scanning in the phase between the two pulse trains. And here I want to give you an idea of all the flexible combination of different wavelengths and settings that we can offer with our uh, laser platforms. Coming back to the scientific platforms now, and here I listed two uh, standard configuration, but we are not limited to that. So what we call the Aesop's twin and the Aesop's dual color, they are erbium based uh, systems. So we use our C fiber lasers, uh, which are emitting a 1.5 micron and can have uh, second harmonic generation stages. And depending on the repetition rate we use, uh, we can go from the twin system at 250 megahertz with four nanosecond time window to the, uh, uh, already mentioned 100 megahertz systems uh, with 10 nanoseconds window. And uh, the data point increment while scanning depends on the settings we are uh, impressing to the system. So it changes and the tuning range is similar for both. And you can see in the bottom uh, of the slide that I show different combinations for different wavelengths that we can combine together in an ASO system because the principle of synchronization and scanning is always the same, uh, but no one uh, is uh, preventing us to change uh, the wavelengths involved, the power. So uh, mix up systems have, for example, 1000 nanometer emission wavelength uh, or hybrid system between 1000 nanometer, 1.5 micron, uh, second harmonic generation stages. So that Actually, the possibilities are a lot here. And uh, <clears throat> also the power involved can be tuned uh, and uh, 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 customized. So we have standard values for emitted power, but we have high power option available. For example, in the case of the Terbium system, we can go even up to 10 watts. And so now I will move to uh, last but not least about the scientific systems 
not only our compact system as a fully integrated software interface, also the scientific engine as a control software, which allows the user basically to work directly from the PC without having to uh, go manually on all the electronics units and set the parameters. Uh, this is again a small video. I'm sorry for the fact that the characters are so small, but what I want to show you here is that the window of, of a recontrol our software is divided in two halves. On the left side is one laser, on the right side is the other laser. And what uh, currently is happening is that the software is auto-locking the repetition rate of the two systems automatically. So that means uh, the user doesn't have to find the, the uh, uh, condition in which repetition rate of the laser and reference match. The software will do that automatically with an automatic procedure which detects uh, the current position of the laser and moves then the actuators to approach the lock and then engage uh, the servo controls. And the engaging of the servo control is indicated in the plot showing the repetition rate deviation on the right bottom side, where the deviation they tend to zero now. And of course, since it is a scanning system, we can change the difference frequency between the laser and this is what is happening right now on the top of the window. So that the full control is possible, including of course, turning on and off the system, which was already done before uh, that the locking happened. So it's time to move uh, to a small pause in which I will kindly ask the audience to ask for questions. Uh, and oh, uh, hello. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Enrico. Thank you, Milan, for your presentation so far. Uh, Enrico, there is a question which actually already arrived uh, earlier in the presentation. So maybe I can ask that one first, and then you can and then proceed with, with the other questions when they arrive. So uh, is this a sampling based on interference? This is the first question. OK, so the first question refers on the mechanism how we perform the sampling. So I hope now it's more clear from the presentation. Uh, the sampling we are talking about is uh, the way we generate this delay between the pump and the probe beam in, in a dual laser system. And it is based on electronic delay. So we don't use a mechanical stage uh, to delay a part of a beam coming from the same laser, but we replace the mechanical stage, uh, like my colleague Milan was explaining before, with the second laser and control electronics to generate a delay between the two train pulses coming from the two lasers. And this scanning can be generated with the ASOPS technique uh, with a different frequency, and then there is a continuous scanning. Or, for example, by stepping the phase uh, uh, in steps, and then it's a step scan. Uh, those are two examples how we real can realize that. Okay, perfect. Hope the answer, uh, the question has been answered. And then another question. And then maybe we can continue with the rest of the presentation after that and uh, have another have another question and answer session in the end of the presentation. So the second question is, uh, what do you mean uh, when you claim that you provide a test report to each in, to each individual delivered unit? I assume this was a question, like a question coming from Milan's part of the presentation, but you can answer as well. So the question is, what do we mean with the providing test report data. So basically um, <clears throat> the phase noise for performance we showed with typical data before, uh, it's referring to the uh, real application case scenario in which uh, the uh, synchronization electronics is used to synchronize the repetition rate of the laser against a given reference. Depending on the layout of the system, this reference can range between the uh, standard case of uh, a microwave reference to, for example, another laser. And what we do uh, for a system customer system is that we will test uh, the phase noise performance with our setup on the actual laser, if a laser is part of the order or on a test laser to actually check on the actual uh, synchronization unit that uh, this performance is reached. So the customer gets then data, phase noise data, that are referred to the very same unit so that it can be sure, or she can be sure, they can be sure that the system is actually performing as specified. 
Okay, so I, I would think and we go that we can continue with the with the rest of the rest of the presentation and uh, and have another another break or another question and answer sessions in the end of the presentation. Thank you. So thank you, Andon, for asking the questions and reading the QA. And so we move to the next slide. Um, here I want to, to talk about applications. So um, we saw how from simply stabilizing the laser to a reference, we can enable scanning by introducing in our uh, locking scheme, particular detuning elements, uh, which det can detune phase or repetition rate. And this is opens uh, a lot of applications which have to do with scanning and pump and probe. And here I listed some of them. So uh, we can make spectroscopy in the fast time domain, we can make terrets uh, uh, imaging and microscopy, or we can study uh, the propagation of uh, ultrasound waves uh, induced by lasers. And this is called picosecond ultrasound in the specific, and it's also a pump and probe technique, or we can think about uh, timing distribution systems. And uh, I want to uh, now tell about a couple of them, which uh, to start with, I will uh, address uh, um, an application which is interesting for people doing solid state studies and in particular dynamics. Um, so what you can see here is the application of a full ASOP system to the study of transient dynamics in solid state system like magnetic films uh, or other uh, thin films. Uh, what is the advantage of such a technique to compare to standard mechanical delay line systems, for example. Uh, you have an ASOP system, so you have the possibility to scan uh, the full uh, period of the laser, the 10 nanoseconds or the four nanoseconds, but also to zoom in and just scan uh, the small transient, the short transient. And by setting the difference frequency, you can also set a different precision uh, of this time axis you get so that you can really have a flexible system which can connect long and short time scales associated with relevant excitation processes in your thin films. Uh, you can study effects like uh, optically stimulated thermal transport, lat lattice excitations or spin dynamics. And now I want to show a nice uh, reference which you can find also on our website, application of ASOPS to uh, resolve transient solid state dynamics. On the right side, you can see uh, how the full uh, range of the ASOPs can be exploited to study the coherent magnetization oscillation for a thin film of iron on germanium. And this was excited at 15, 16 nanometer. The idea is that with the pump, uh, we excited a magnetized sample. This induced uh, variations in the magnetization, which can be measured with the probe. This oscillation can be measured in this way. But on the same uh, slide, I also show you the left plot. This is important because um, I want to show you here that such uh, is a system capable of scanning uh, uh, many nanoseconds of signal is also capable of uh, uh, very uh, tiny time resolution and study also effects of only a few picoseconds like here, where the setup is sort of calibrated by studied um, coherent optical phone reflectivity oscillations, which are detected in an antimony thin film. And here the involved frequency is on is 4.5 terahertz. And so the time scales are much tighter than the coherent magnetization oscillation we are seeing. And so this is a very nice example on how ASOPS allows this switch between different time scales with one system allowing uh, the uh, study of uh, completely different time scales. And with this, I want to switch now to uh, a, a, a compact ASOPS application, which of course we work also with the scientific ASOPS. So here you can see on the left, um, the compact uh, OSE system. So our optical sampling engine. And here it, uh, it is used um, to um, the, the study of photoresponse uh, in thin materials, or in this case, two-dimensional material. The idea is that um, uh, when study photodetectors, one of the, and especially new materials, one of the most important parameters 
is of course responsivity, noise equivalent power and all the parameters we know, but also response time, so rise time. And uh, there is, uh, there are not easy methods to, uh, to measure such a response time when uh, uh, also contacts are involved because they may also slow down the response. So if one wants to measure intrinsically the response times of such uh, new materials, then a local technique is required. That is really probing only the speed of the material itself. And an idea uh, which we want to show, uh, application idea which we want to show here is the so-called two pulse coincidence for the response technique. The idea is that with a pump and prop system, one can send two pulses together to a thin material when the two pulses are, coinc are coincident in time, then there is a saturation of the photoresponse, which is uh, uh, recorded as a minimum in the photoresponse. Then since we can control the uh, separation in time of these two pulses, we can uh, increase the separation. And at some point we will see an exponential recovery of this photoresponse, which means the carriers are relaxing again in the ground state. And this is, practically the way we can uh, measure what is the speed of the material by going out of the saturation, by separating again these two coincident pulses. And that's why it's called two pulse coincidence photoresponse. And uh, in the particular example I'm showing here, this is a, a nanoletter paper, very recent one with our OSE system, which shows um, how, uh, colloidal nanocrystals can be promising candidates for solution processing as speed photodetectors in the infrared range, because this was done with 1.5 micron radiation. And how uh, the researchers uh, from the University of Tübingen were able to measure here uh, this uh, photoresponse signal and the exponential decay by fully using the available delay times that we have uh, with uh, such an ASOP system. So they measured in this plot up to plus minus five nanoseconds, so the complete uh, range, and measure here uh, intrinsic response time of one nanosecond, which is not limited uh, in the measurement by the contacts because we are probing locally the material. Thanks to coupling optics, which is not shown here, but that, uh, one can uh, uh, customize from the system to the sample. And we at Melo can always also help in such kind of customizations. And of course, the, one of the main, uh, main advantages here compared to a standard mechanical system is that instead of taking hours and a lot of corrections to measure such a long time scale, in a few milliseconds with a very good resolution of 10 femtoseconds even, we can scan the whole 10 nanosecond range. Last but not least, I want to speak about terrestrial spectroscopy. While uh, uh, terrestrial can uh, be very well done with the ASOPS engine, it can be a scientific system or not, uh, or a compact uh, system. And uh, in this case, our pump and probe experiment is uh, constituted by the terrestrial experiment, and our uh, emission and detection happens with photoconductive antennas. There, we are pretty an expert in it because. Uh, we uh, Mel also have time domain terrace system, and one of them is the teraisops. And here you can see typical performance for it. So uh, the bandwidth and uh, what in terrace uh, community is called the dynamic range. Uh, apologies for signal to noise ratio is not correct. Dynamic range, total scan range of 10 nanoseconds and scanning rates, uh, which are range independent, and of course. Uh, based on a scientific system, the TeraISOPS, we have uh, custom laser configurations here. Now, since I was speaking about a uh, uh, scientific platform again, I want to step back to uh, application of optical ASOPS, so no TeraISOPS at all here. We are speaking about the uh, ASOPS engine uh, based on our C-fiber laser, so it is uh, 1.5 microns and an 80 ma uh, nanometer system, and an application in what is called picosecond ultrasonics. And in this particular example, uh, the researchers at the University of Delft uh, measured pressure sensor 
and check uh, for uh, the mechanical uh, stability in addition using picosecond ultrasonics. So basically how picosecond ultrasonics works. It is uh, like almost uh, uh, all the examples shown before a pump and probe technique. But in this particular case, we use the optical beam to generate uh, of um, to generate sound waves in the material, which are then detected with the probe beam. So the setup uh, looks like a sample being excited by both uh, by the pump and then being detected with the probe and the photo detector to measure uh, the variations in property uh, when the probe beam measures the samples in the presence of the acoustic wave. In this particular case, the idea was to study next generation pressure sensor. And the pressure sensor were built um, on freestanding complex oxide membranes on a substrate. And uh, the problem of such freestanding membranes is how good is the adhesion between the membrane and the substrate. And a nice way to measure such adhesion is to use ultrasonics. So the idea is that a pump pulse is generating uh, ultrasonic wave in the sample. And this ultrasonic wave will be reflected at the boundaries. And with the probe beam, one can measure such reflections and see uh, how strong is the echo coming from the boundaries. And the idea is that if the echo coming back is attenuated, then there is a better adhesion of the membrane to the substance. So there is quite less of an interface. So the reflection is less. So it means uh, the, the sensor is gluing together better, so to say. And the idea is that uh, here uh, uh, an annealing process is uh, performed on the samples and one can uh, nicely see from before data before and after the annealing how uh, the peak of uh, the eco pulses uh, can be reduced in the ultrasonics measurement showing, showing very nicely that adhesion is improved. And so constituting a proof of uh, the fabrication process. And last but not least, uh, so uh, looking for a bigger picture here, uh, synchronization and phase detectors can be used to distribute time. And there is a Mello system, actually a product line on its own, which uh, uh, work, works on the timing distribution in particular, uh, in the particular case, the distribution of synchronization signals and timing signals in a very uh, extended experiment, why, like it could be the Vexel Observatory. So the idea is we have uh, a ref reference and we have a master optical master oscillator, and then we have fiber links to the different users of this timing signal, where uh, local nodes are located with again. Uh, phase detector and local oscillators that are locked to the fiber links and to the master oscillator in a, in a fashion that drifts are compensated and everybody gets uh, uh, a timing signal which is following uh, exactly the reference. And um, I, in all of these locks, uh, a mellow synchro unit is uh, employed or a mellow phase detector. So, uh, I invite uh, everybody which is uh, more interested or for in this timing system to contact us directly and to have a look at our website and especially to make a virtual tour of the Vetzel project. We have an interactive, uh, uh, interactive interface on our website, which is pretty neat and funny if one wants to learn more about a uh, timing distribution system. And with this, I will be ready with applications and I will give the word to Milan for the Many thanks, app. Enrico, for giving us a nice insight into different applications for high-speed optical sampling and synchronization solutions. I'd like to wrap up the set before we are coming to the Q&A session, where we will answer most of your questions, I hope, uh, in giving you now a quick summary. So we discussed why you actually need a synchronization. It could be repetition rate stabilization. It could be to compensate and uh, improve jitter and drift performance of your system. It could be ultra-fast optical sampling, as we pointed out in our last slides. And 
to address this topic, there are different methods and levels on how to achieve different levels of synchronization. It could be either a simple RF locking, it could be a single or dual laser locking technology with hundreds or a few femtoseconds of stabilization uh, performances. And all this could be packed into a very compact um, system like our OSE engine or a more versatile solution like the ASOPS solution. And finally, Enrico just gave a quick overview on a few and dedicated applications on synchronization and ultra fast sampling techniques. I hope you liked the presentation so far. And we are coming now to our last point where Andan will take over to read out a few of your questions and Enrico and me will try to answer most of them uh, that we can manage now in the time. And any, any open and remaining questions will be answered afterwards. So thank you, thank you once again, uh, Enrico and Milan. Uh, I, I will try to, to start the questions. There are quite a few of them. And then depending on the time and uh, how, how we can move forward, we can decide where we can stop and answer all the other questions. Uh, personally, by by an email to to each of the to each of the people who have asked them, so maybe I can start with the first question. Uh, uh, maybe this is re referred to Enrico's part. So the pulse width is tens of femtoseconds. Does it mean that the resolution is less than pulse width of probe comp? Uh, for one hertz difference, the point increment is 0 0.1 femtosecond. What is the relation between 0 0.1 femtoseconds and the resolution? So um, I have to thank um, uh, the author for this question because this is actually coming to uh, understanding the real mechanism of the optical sampling. So what we talk, uh, when we talk about um, the incrementing point is actually what uh, uh, theoretically is possible as a point increment from the ASAPS effect. Then it's of course very important to see what is the actual pass duration for the given laser that we are using to scan. So it is true that actually the real limit to the resolution is an interplay between all of them. So we have on one side, we have the point increment uh, due to from the theory of the ASOPS effect, which can be very small. If this is very, very small, then of course the pass duration of our lasers will limit uh, what is our real resolution. And on top of that, uh, something we should never forget, there is also uh, the quality of the locking. So how good is uh, the integrated timing jitter for the lock of the two laser uh, against each other. This we didn't mention <clears throat> during the presentation, but for our ASOP system, there is of course also specification and characterization of this. So depending on which parameter dominates at the given time, uh, the resolution is cannot always be the point increment we specify at a given uh, repetition rate offset. But of course, uh, it is uh, a value that one has to keep in mind uh, for certain settings. I hope that answered the question. If uh, not, or if this is not complete, uh, we can for sure continue the discussion per email. I would be very happy to say yeah, more. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Enrico, for your answer. Definitely just feel free to contact any of us and we'll be, we'll be happy, glad to, to answer all your, all your questions. Uh, so let's move to, to another question. Uh, what is the jitter between the 100 megahertz reference oscillator and then 100 megahertz optical pulse train from the laser? So I assume this refers to the first part of the timing jitters to single uh, to single laser locked or or double, or two optical lasers locked. But maybe you and Rick or Milan can can answer better. So uh, basically, the question is. Um, how, yeah, how much is the jitter between uh, the reference 100 megahertz pulse train and the 100 megahertz optical pass when we are using microwave uh, uh, reference signal. So uh, this is also depending on which kind of locking scheme we are using. When we are comparing just the 100 megahertz signal directly with the 100 megahertz uh, optical pulse train and we are not locking at higher harmonics, then we have a higher jitter because uh, at uh, low frequency, uh, RF phase detection is not as, as good as at higher frequencies. But if we go for a harmonic solution in which we multiply uh, the, the reference and we have, or we have a phase locked reference at uh, higher harmonics, for example, one gigahertz, 
and we can come in the range of our uh, typical 200 femtosecond residual time in jitter or same as reference specification. And there I have to mention that actually in those cases, the measurement tells you a value which is not always the real, uh, the real uh, truth, so to say, or it is limited by the reference itself because the ref reference is limiting your measurement so that you have a tail of high frequency noise, which is actually dominating the time and jitter contribution. And that is how, how actually when doing optical correlation, if you have the possibility to generate your microwave from another optical laser and lock in, in, in the scheme with the optical correlation, then you have a much more sensitive detection and you are not limited any, anymore by this uh, high frequency noise, which we were talking about before, and you get even 10 femtoseconds of uh, residual time in jitter. Okay, thank you again, Enrico. Uh, let's move to, to another question. Uh, what is the scanning limit of a terahertz system? So uh, in a terahertz system, the scanning limit uh, is depending on many parameters. Uh, so from, from one side, you have uh, what is uh, the possibility of offsetting of your laser system. So you have piezo actuators and you have to see how much uh, the piezo can be offset uh, before they start to resonate, for example. And this is usually a few kilohertz, but using EOM actuators and uh, you can also go to higher speed. And then there is, of course, uh, the limit in, uh, introduced by the acquisition electronics. So at some point, depending on which amplifier bandwidth you're using and which kind of acquisition electronics you are using, you have uh, a limit in the uh, detection bandwidth because the noise of the electronics is then at some point higher than your signal that when you use amplifiers with many megahertz of bandwidth, for example. Okay, uh, and another question. Uh, this could be from uh, for, for Milan more. Uh, what is the figure nine that is printed now, printed uh, on your laser models? Thanks, Anon. I guess this refers to the one slide where we showed exemplarily a terahertz composition with the figure nine oscillator. So figure nine is a mode locking technology. A uh, technology that is uh, unique and patented by Menlo Systems, actually. And the nine, the symbol that is depicted on the slides that I've shown before, refers to the loop of the oscillator. So the structure is not an eight, like you know it from very conventional mode locking technique. But the nine, we could reduce a few of the parts that tend to degrade over time, such as central absorbers, like you know it from CSUM and uh, other moving parts inside the oscillator that are just not there. And for a figure nine laser, this means that it makes the laser uh, more solid and uh, more pro uh, less prone against environmental perturbations such as humidity, temperature changes. And we use this also to integrate it in our laser systems. Basically every laser systems that are offered by Menlo are made with figure nine technology. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Milan. I think uh, we can stop here with the, with the questions. I would like to thank everybody for participating in this in this webinar and for listening to this webinar, and as well everybody who participated actively by asking their questions. Uh, a few remaining questions we will definitely answer to you personally by email uh, due to time limitations. But once again, thank you, Milan. Thank you, Enrico. Thank you, Sakshi, for this really really nice webinar. And thank you so much, Andon, for facilitating the Q&A and for Menlo for sponsoring today's webinar. Um, as a reminder for our attendees, um, today's <clears throat> excuse me webinar is being recorded. So if you want to rewatch it or forward it onto a colleague, you can definitely do so. The um, recording will be posted online in the next couple of days. So you'll receive an email once it's live. You can click on the link to just view it directly. And again, um, the email is on the screen for the Menlo sales alias. If you have any other questions that uh, come to you later today or you didn't have a chance to ask uh, during the webinar, feel free to contact um, our speakers here directly. And that's all we have. Um, I'll see you guys at the next webinar and have a great day.